Last year, I made a video in which I presented the current top five highest yielding dividend aristocrat stocks. And in that video, the top five companies were Chevron, AbbVie, IBM, ExxonMobil, and AT&T. At the time, these were the highest paying dividend stocks that carried the title of being an aristocrat. Since that video was released, the rankings have changed in a few ways. As many of us are aware, AT&T announced that they were cutting their dividend in February of 2022 after 36 consecutive years of dividend increases. The good news is that AT&T is the only company on that list that has cut their dividend. There haven't been any other stocks on that list that have reduced their dividend amount since then. But as time moves on, that list is no longer accurate as new companies have become aristocrats and some now offer a higher dividend yield than others. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current top 5 highest yielding dividend aristocrat stocks available to investors. If you're not familiar, a dividend aristocrat is a stock that's successfully been able to raise their dividends for at least 25 consecutive years. It's a pretty big accomplishment considering a company needs to increase their dividend despite recessions, the global pandemic, politics, economic changes, and so on. As of the making of this video, there's roughly 66 companies that carry that title. So today we're going to be taking a look at the top 5 aristocrats offering the highest dividend yields. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Coming in at number 5, we have ExxonMobil, ticker symbol XOM. Exxon is one of the world's largest publicly traded energy providers and chemical manufacturers that develops and applies next-generation technologies to help meet the world's growing needs for energy and high-quality chemical products. They explore for and produce crude oil and natural gas in the United States as well as internationally. Exxon operates through upstream, downstream, and chemical segments and is involved in the manufacturing, trade, transport, and sale of crude oil, natural gas, petroleum products, and other specialty products. They were founded in 1870 and they're based out of Irving, Texas. Currently offering a dividend yield of 4.22%, XOM pays dividends to shareholders on a quarterly basis. They last raised their dividend in November of 2021, and they now pay $0.88 cents per share in distributions. To date, Exxon has grown their quarterly dividend every year for 39 consecutive years and counting. I know some people were speculating if COVID was going to result in them not growing or even cutting their dividend, but the company increased it by a penny, which was the smallest increase in their distribution amount within the last 10 years at least. Their stock has gotten a huge boost this year after being on a downward trend for several years. XOM's share price is currently up more than 34% since January 1st, which can be attributed to surging oil prices. 2021 was a significantly better year for Exxon compared to 2020. Due to the pandemic, the company reported a net income loss of over $22.4 billion. But in their 2021 report, Exxon reported a net income of $23 billion, which was their highest in seven years. They were also able to reduce their debt on the balance sheet by roughly $20 billion as well. One thing that I know is on a lot of people's minds is how are these oil companies like Exxon and Shell going to adjust to a more eco-friendly, clean energy world now that governments are pushing green energy more and more and the consumer demand for electric vehicles continues to rise. I've referenced this graph in a previous video before which really helps show just how dependent the world still is and will continue to be on oil for the foreseeable future. The fact is a lot of everyday products we use require oil, which would include paints, electronics, clothing, synthetic leathers, and a whole host of other goods. So even though oil has this bad image to it, we're still going to need oil well into the future. Exxon has also been pushing this greener agenda, claiming that they're pushing to advance innovative solutions for a lower emissions energy future, and they say that they're pushing to achieve net zero emissions from their operations by 2050. Whether or not you believe them is entirely up to you, obviously. There's no denying that governments have been putting pressure on them. But in summary, Exxon is one of the many companies that have surged in the stock market recently because of what's going on in Ukraine. And it'll be interesting to see in their Q1 2020 results to see just how much they benefited from this conflict. At number 4 on this list, we have Amcor, ticker symbol AMCR. Amcor is a global leader in developing and producing responsible packaging for a wide range of products. With 225 locations and 46,000 employees in more than 40 countries, Amcor manufactures packaging for beverages, food, healthcare, personal care, pet items, and more for some of the biggest brands in the world, including Coca-Cola, Nestle, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, and many others. They've been in business since 1860, and they're headquartered in Switzerland. Their stock currently offers a dividend yield of 4.26%, and they pay dividends on a quarterly basis. They last raised their dividend in November of 2021 to $0.12 per share, which marks 39 years of continuous dividend growth, which is just as long as Exxon has been increasing their dividends. Their dividend yield is more than twice the average for a dividend aristocrat, as highlighted in their latest investor presentation on their website. Amcor has only been listed on the New York Stock Exchange since June of 2019, and so far the price has basically flatlined since. While companies like Amcor are pretty boring, they do play a necessary role in our everyday lives. 
There's always going to be a need for packaging, and Amcor is a company that's pretty well positioned within the industry. According to their February 2020 report, the company has a market cap of $18 billion and brought in $12.9 billion in sales last year. They also have a large international presence, and while 47% of their sales come from North America, they also had a sizable amount of market share in Western Europe, as well as emerging markets like India, China, and Brazil. Not everything to talk about Amcor is good though, as there have been a couple issues. The company has been experiencing shrinking margins for their packaging, which means that Amcor is earning less profit from each individual product due to rising costs for the materials used to produce them. This along with the current Ukraine conflict isn't making things easier for them at this time, but there's no denying that Amcor has such a large presence that hopefully this company will be able to rebound from what's currently happening to them. Coming in at number 3 on this list is a company that I've talked more about than any other on my channel, and that would be Realty Income, ticker symbol O. For more than 53 years, Realty Income has been acquiring and managing freestanding commercial properties that generate rental revenue under long-term net lease agreements. With over 11,000 properties in all 50 states as well as the UK and Puerto Rico, Realty Income is also referred to as the monthly dividend company for their long-standing ability to deliver monthly dividends with consistent growth. Their stock currently offers investors a 4.44% dividend yield and as previously mentioned they're the only company on this list that pays monthly. To date they've paid 620 consecutive monthly dividends and have increased their dividend for 98 consecutive quarters. Right now the company pays a monthly dividend of 24.7 cents per share per month. Realty Income is a real estate investment trust, or a REIT, which is a company that owns income producing real estate. REITs were created in order to allow anyone with a brokerage account to more easily invest in real estate. REITs receive income from tenants who rent their properties, and as a requirement, the REIT is required to distribute 90% of their earnings to shareholders in the form of dividends. So REITs typically offer much higher dividend yields than your average S&P 500 stock. There's currently two other dividend aristocrat REITs out there, with one being Essex Property Trust, ticker symbol ESS, and Federal Realty Trust, ticker symbol FRT. Realty Income's property portfolio consists of a lot of businesses that tend to perform regardless of economic conditions. The top industries they rent their properties to are convenience stores, dollar stores, drug stores, and grocery stores. But the company made headlines in February of this year when they announced that they were acquiring Encore Boston Harbor Resort and Casino for $1.7 billion, which is Realty Income's first acquisition in the casino gaming industry. They also spun off many of their office properties into a new company, Orion Office Read, in November of last year. In their latest investor presentation, Realty Income states that their number one long-term goal is to become a top five global REIT, and with their latest acquisitions, they appear to be moving more aggressively towards that goal. Within the last couple years, this company has been increasing their global presence, now owning 173 properties throughout Europe. I remember a few years ago that they didn't have too much of a presence outside the US, but now they appear to be moving more aggressively, it seems. Overall, I'm pretty excited about where Realty Income is going, and I continue to have a huge amount of confidence in their leadership. And number two is a company that I've never discussed before on this channel by the name of Leggett and Platt, ticker symbol LEG. This is a consumer discretionary company that operates in three distinct segments, bedding products, specialized products, as well as furniture, flooring, and textile products. In these three categories, they manufacture a wide range of products from mattress springs to flooring underlayment to hydraulic cylinders. But it's their furniture manufacturing that brings in the majority of their revenue. They've been around since the year 1883 and they're based out of Missouri. Right now their stock offers investors a 4.68% dividend yield and it issues dividends to shareholders on a quarterly basis. The last time they increased their dividend was in June of last year, which is now at 42 cents per share. To date the company has increased their dividend for 50 consecutive years, which is the longest streak out of any stock on this list, and in fact it makes them more than just a dividend aristocrat, but rather a dividend king. Leggett and Platt is a company that's kind of unusual since they're categorized as being a home furnishings company, but they also manufacture car parts, aerospace tubing, and hydraulic cylinders for construction equipment. But despite that, the company is pretty well positioned within these industries as they capture a large percentage of the market. For fourth quarter 2021, the company saw a 13% increase in sales compared to fourth quarter 2020 and a 19% increase in sales for the entire year when compared to the previous year. But despite that, the company's stock hasn't been performing too well as of recently. It's currently down 9.5% so far this year, and it's down over 25% when compared to 5 years ago. This is despite a continuous increase in revenue as time progresses, and I think the reason why this stock has been progressing downwards so much this year has to do with inflation. But this company is still well positioned, and they're still well fortified within their industries. Finally, the number one highest yielding dividend aristocrat stock is IBM, ticker symbol IBM. 
International Business Machines produces and sells computer hardware, middleware, and software and provides hosting and consulting services in areas ranging from mainframe computers to nanotechnology. IBM is also a major research organization holding the record for the most U.S. patents generated by a business for 28 consecutive years and counting. They were founded in 1911 and they're headquartered in Armok, New York. IBM stock has been able to increase their dividends every year for the past 26 years, making them just barely a dividend aristocrat. Their stock currently offers investors a dividend yield of 5.08% and they pay distributions to shareholders on a quarterly basis. Their last dividend increase was back in April of 2021 and they currently pay $1.64 per share. Their dividend increases have been slowing down within the last few years, as you can see they've only been increasing their distributions by about a penny for the last couple years. This is in part because IBM hasn't been performing as well as they did decades ago. Their share price reflects IBM's difficulties to adapt to changing markets, as their share price has been on a downward trajectory since 2013. Back then it was trading at over $215 a share, whereas now it trades for around $130 a share. It's down about 3% from a year ago, 24.2% from 5 years ago, and it's down over 35% from this time 10 years ago. Their financials clearly indicate a long-standing issue, as you can see their revenue has continued to fall almost every year over the last decade. But the company has been trying to turn their luck around as they've been pursuing new avenues of trying to increase their income. One example of this would be their consulting business, which saw a 16% increase in revenue compared to the previous year. Their software also saw a revenue growth of 10% compared to the previous year as well. Both of these improvements can help be attributed to Red Hat, which is a software company IBM acquired back in 2018 for $34 billion in a bid to help move the company in a new direction. In the end, the jury is still out on whether or not this expensive acquisition will help, but so far that hasn't been the case. IBM will definitely need to make larger changes if they want to sustain that dividend in the years ahead. There's a couple more things I want to address before ending this video. Some of you might be wondering why Altria isn't on this list, because after all, they've been able to increase their dividend for more than 50 years, and they currently offer the highest dividend yield out of any dividend aristocrat or king at 6.86%. In 2007, Altria spun off Kraft Foods, which resulted in their dividend being decreased. This resulted in them being removed from the dividend aristocrat index, but many people argue that they should still be on this list, because if you combine the dividends from Altria and Kraft, the dividend from both weren't cut. So to this day, many people still consider them to be a dividend king, and if you do, then consider them number one on this list. Finally, one more thing I want to point out is that next year there's going to be another stock that's projected to become a dividend aristocrat, which is WP Carey, who've been able to increase their dividends every year for the past 24 years thus far. If they can make it to next year without cutting their dividend, they'll officially become a dividend aristocrat, which I fully expect them to achieve, and their stock currently offers a 5.17% dividend yield, which is higher than the top 5 stocks we looked at today. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below, and click subscribe if you want to see more dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's a sizable enough audience out there who wants this kind of content, and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright everyone, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.